Hi, this is John. Welcome to another video. Today I'm introducing a new feature called Moving Elements. And this can be found under the Enhance menu. It's been added to Moving Photos and Moving Overlays, which was already pre um, available in previous versions. So we now have this new addition. So if I click on Moving Elements, this um, photograph of the balloons will open in the Moving Elements dialog. We have the selection tools, automatic selection tools and manual selection brushes. And the idea behind this new feature is to take a static image and make parts of it move. Typically um, features that would normally be expected to move such as clouds, the ocean, river, waterfall, etc. I'm just going to use the sky button by clicking once to um, make a selection and this is powered by um, artificial intelligence from Adobe Research and as you can see it makes a pretty good job of um, uh, just selecting the sky and the uh, the blue sky and the clouds and excluding the um, hot air balloons. I'm going to select the quick selection tool here and choose subtract because it's just picked up a little bit of the water down here and I'm going to just take that out like that. It's not absolutely perfect, but with this tool, the selections don't have to be perfect. They can be rough and ready. Um, now what we do is we click on the direction arrow and draw an arrow across the photograph for the directions I want the clouds to move in. And I'm just going to increase the speed a touch. And then we can just simply click on the play button to generate the um, output. Um, this does take quite a few seconds. As you can see, my machine is not the fastest in the world. Um, it doesn't have a lot of RAM, but um, I'm not going to speed it up. I want you to see just how long this will take in um, real time. When I make some other examples, I may jump forward. And actually, that's done a pretty good job. I can see it's picking up some little bit of drag here. Um, in the um, from from this uh, one balloon. So, with the with this feature, you do have to pause and go back and refine the selection slightly. So, I'm going to um, again use the um, quick selection tool, uh, quick selection tool, in um, subtract mask. Now, actually, I'm going to use the brush because with the brush um, selection brush, I can turn on the the red mask and um, I, I can see then what I'm actually painting. So I'm going to paint along the edge to add to that red mask there, which means I'm excluding that part from the, from the selection. So I think something like that should do it. And I might just paint along this edge here because I think it was picking up a little bit of that blue sky. And we can preview again by uh, clicking the play button. And I'm sorry you're going to have to wait again for a few more seconds whilst it generates the um, the output. A little bit of patience required with um, <laughs> with this feature, but it gets there in the end, and um, we should be able to see the results very very soon. And there we have it. Again, it's not quite right. I still see a little bit here, so I'm going to have to click the pause button again, and. Um, mask off some more of this um, this area. I think I can mask off all of that and we'll try again with the um, with the play button. As you can see there's a lot of trial and error involved but when it works it, um, it, it does make it worthwhile. So I'm going to pause the video and jump forward and this time I think it works it works quite well. There's a little bit of blue being picked up here but it's it, because it's part of the sky it's not so noticeable and I think that will do. So we can save that but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make a second selection this time of the water because you can move things in different directions and at different speeds. So let's just pause this. So I've um, selected the water on this one and added a different direction arrow. Um, there has to be a small area of separation between the two selections. They both need to be contiguous selections like I have here with the water and with the, um, the sky. So let's click the play button and see how this works out. I think that's not bad actually. Um, 
for the for the water and together with the moving clouds it gives almost the um, impression of a time lapse but without having to take hundreds of photos so that's using two different direction arrows on two selections so i can save that so let's look at another example moving elements selected from the enhance menu and again i'm going to click on the sky button to um, to automatically set, select the sky and it's done a pretty good job even selecting the blue bits between these um between these branches so let's click the um the arrow button now to add a direction arrow and i'm going to just draw one single arrow across the clouds like that just a touch more on the um, speed and then click the play button and um, wait for the output as you can see it says that it's generating output for some reason i'm not seeing a um, progress bar but it's um it's obviously working in the um, in the background so i'm not going to speed this up i'm going to let you see exactly what happens and there we are we have the um, the output and you can see it's picking up some little bits of drag here from um, i think probably from these branches and from this um, first giraffe and a little bit on this tall branch here so i'm going to pause and then choose the selection brush to um, to refine this I'll, I'll do this by turning on the mask because it's easier to in, in my opinion to paint with this selection brush with the mask on so i'm going to just mask out this branch here and um, mask out these branches here between the first animal and the um, where we're getting the drag and I think it was this little bit here which was um, which was causing some drag so and I don't need these bits between the legs so I can I can mask those out I'm not looking for any sky movement there and maybe this little bit of blue between these branches can also um, be masked so let's click the play button again and again it's generating the output even though there's no um, progress bar but um, you see with this um, uh, feature this new feature in photoshop elements that you have to keep pausing and going back and correcting bits of the um, selection you don't always get a perfect result first time off and that's not bad actually it's quite it's quite good although i can still see something here which is not really cloud it's it's still a bit of a drag so let's pause again and um, we will add some more masking along the back of the um, along, along the back of the draft giraffe do that one there and again let's click play uh, and I think that's got it now I think that's done a good job overall but you can see how many times you have to kind of stop and start and refine the selection in some cases you have to draw more arrows but um, I think I'm happy with that so um, I can click export and save you can save the output as either an mp4 or a gif file um, maybe you would use gif if you're going to upload it to social media or mp4 if you wanted to add it to a video timeline with other clips and, um, and and still images so give it a name and then simply click save to complete this next example is of a flower and i'm going to try and introduce a little bit of movement into the petals again the kind of time lapse um, style so th this time i'm going to choose select background and um, okay the artificial intelligence makes quite a good selection by the looks of it but i'm now going to go to the menu and choose select inverse and that reverses the selection which means that the flower is now selected and not the background and we can um, then start to um, add some motion now we have the rose um, selected um, which is the inverse of the background you see the marching ants there and i've added these several direction arrows and i've checked the box select all so that they, they all turn blue um, i've increased the speed a little bit on this one so let's just click the play button and see what happens 
and I think that's quite a nice effect. So not just moving water or clouds, but you can use it on other suitable subjects also. I hope these few examples have provided some inspiration for you to try moving elements of your own photos and I look forward to seeing any great examples. Thanks for watching, until next time, bye bye for now.